it's Mrs. Lamondo again, and I'm here to talk to you about how to summarize a nonfiction book. Now, last time we chatted, it was about how to summarize a fiction book using somebody wanted but so. However, with a nonfiction book, there's not usually a character. There isn't always a problem. Instead, you're getting information. So instead, this time I want to give you an easy way to summarize a nonfiction book. So let's check it out. So in a nonfiction summary, you should have what is the topic, what is the main idea, and what are the details. So T-M-I-D, T-M-I-D. So let's read a little bit of a nonfiction book and identify what is the topic, the main idea, and the details. Now remember, the really cool thing about reading nonfiction is you don't have to start from the beginning and read it all the way through. You can find something that interests you. So I have this nonfiction book, this book about a true life thing, and it's called Dogs Bring Newspapers But Cats Bring Mice and Other Fascinating Facts About Animal Behavior. Interesting. So when I open up a nonfiction book, I oftentimes see what the book is going to be about. So I have animals on the ground, animals in trees, animals in the air, water and land animals. Now you might not know this about me, but I have a cat at home and I love cats. So immediately my eye was drawn to this little part here that says cats, page eight. So I'm gonna check that out first. So within this section, I have all different things about cats. I have clever hunters, cats and people, and looks like some random text boxes and and fun facts. I think I want to read some people. So I'm going to read this section and then summarize it using T-M-I-D. Cats and people. Cats and humans have lived together since ancient times. The Egyptians worshipped cats as gods. Many cat owners believe that cats can be tamed, but cats rarely change their basic behavior. A cat playing with a toy behaves as if the toy were a mouse the cat had caught. Cats may live in a house with no real enemies and plenty of food, yet the cats still catch mice and bring them home. Mother house cats will still seek a safe, dark place to have their young. And as their kittens grow up among people, the mother cats will still teach their young how to avoid danger and hunt for food. All right, the topic here was easy because it was in the header. This is all about cats and people. The main idea is that cats may live with people, but they still act the way they would out in nature. So they still have those animal instincts. And some details that support that main idea are that cats who are house cats will still find a cold, not a cold, a quiet, dark place to have their kittens. Cats will play with toys as if they are um, seeking out prey. And cats will still kill small animals even if they have an abundance of food. So you can see how I gave the topic the main idea and the details. Let's talk about another animal. Let's go to, ooh, elephants. So here we have huge and hefty, elephant herds, and some fun facts. I think I'm gonna go with huge and hefty. Elephants are big in every way. Besides being the largest land animals, elephants eat and drink more than any other land animal. An adult elephant eats about 330 pounds, 150 kilograms of food and drinks 40 gallons, that's 150 liters, of water every day. Elephants in the wild spend as many as 16 hours daily eating and drinking. Inside an elephant's big head is a huge brain. People train elephants to do circus tricks such as marching around in a circle, rising up on their rear legs, and even standing on their head. Humans have also taught working elephants to haul logs and pull wagons. Wow, I learned a lot from that. So again, a lot of times you can use the header as your main idea. So this is about how animals, elephants rather, are huge and hefty. So the main idea is that they are one of the largest land animals. And some details that support it are that they eat about 330 pounds of food. They drink about 40 gallons of water. They spend 16 hours a day eating and drinking and they can be trained to haul logs and pull wagons. Again, using our topic, main idea, and details to support what we've read. Let's try one more time. 
How about gorillas? So I have big and fierce looking or call it a day. So I'm going to, uh, maybe I'll do call it a day. A gorilla's day begins at dawn. The head male gorilla leads the group to its first feeding place. Here the gorillas chomp down on their food for about two hours. From mid-morning to mid-afternoon, the group rests. Adult gorillas either nap or groom one another. The young play and swing from trees. After resting, it's time to travel on and find the next feeding place. Here the gorillas eat until dusk when the group builds nests of branches in the trees or on the ground. They sleep about 12 hours. The group awakens at dawn and sets off on another day of wandering the forest. Wow. So the main idea of this was all about how gorillas spend their day. The supporting details for that was that they nap, they groom one another, they look for a feeding place, they sleep for about 12 hours a day, and they constantly wander the forest looking for their next place to eat. So again, if you are reading a nonfiction book, you can find plenty on Epic. You want to summarize and using T M I D. What is the topic? What is the main idea? And what are the details? So today, I'll I hope that you consider reading a nonfiction book on Epic. Anything that you're interested in, I know you can find something. Until next time, readers. I'll see you then. Bye.